Do you just care about me? And no more. And when Jesus asked Simon the third time, it broke his heart. Peter was grieved. Yea, Lord, thou knowest all things. Thou knowest that I love thee. Now wait for just a moment. Jesus is restoring Simon Peter. And his emphasis was on the fact, Peter, do you love me? Do you love me? Peter responded just like I would respond just like he would respond. <clears throat> I promise if I went away around the building tonight to everyone individually <clears throat> and ask you the question, do you love Jesus? I might be surprised it is possible. <clears throat> but I would assume that everybody here tonight would say, I love you. I love you. But Jesus said, Simon, if you love me, what are you doing here? Simon, if you love me, why, why aren't you? You doing what I called you to do. Simon, if you love me, feed my sheep. Simon, if you love me, prove it. Show me your love. If you love me, Simon, feed my Peter got the message loud and clear that it was all about Jesus and it's all about loving him. That's why Simon Peter <laughs> preached on the, on the day of Pentecost. Mm -hmm. 53 days later, 3,000 souls were saved. That's why Simon Peter became the chief elder of the early church. That's why Simon Peter became the main spokesman for the apostles. Peter had <clears throat> learned what it meant to put him first. To love Jesus. Above all, I, I want to close by, by saying something that's, that's very, very important. God's love for us is love in action. Hearing his love, not that we love him, but that he loved us and gave himself to be a creation for our sin. Our love for God is love in reaction. First mm -hmm. John 4 18 or 19 says, We love him because he first, first loved us. us. Mm -hmm. So God's love for us is love in action. Our love for God is love in reaction. I want to love him. And I do love him. But I don't 
living like I ought to love him. And I'm going to be honest with you. <clears throat> I don't love him as much as I want to love him. You know, you talk about revival of all mercy, revival in the Atkins Baptist Church. If, if every one of us that are here tonight could fall head over heels afresh and anew in love with Jesus, you talk about revival? If every one of us could just in our own hearts and lives put him first, love him unconditionally, no matter what, Since our love is a response to his love, the only way that you and I can love him more is to have a greater perception and understanding of his love for us. Are you with me? Does that make sense? We love him because he first loved us. Our love is a response to his love. And the more I understand just how much he loves me, and the more I understand just how much he cares for me, and, and the more I perceive his love for me, the more my love reacts to his love, and the more I love him. And so the only way that I can love him more is to have a greater perception of his love mm -hmm. for me. Hearing his love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be a propitiation for our sin. I've got three children. got a son, I have two daughters. And I'm gonna confess tonight, I couldn't give one of my children to die for my dearest friend. I couldn't. I would die for my children. I love my kids more than I love the air I breathe. I love my kids more than I love the blood that flows through my veins. But to give one of my children for someone that I care about and love dearly, I couldn't do it. I just could not. <coughs> And the thing is, I could give one of my children to die and I would still have two left. But God loved me. I was not his friend. As a matter of fact, I stood against everything he stood for and everything he represented. I was alienated. I was a sinner by conception, by my conduct, and by choice. Yet God said, I love you. I love you. And before I lose you, I send my only son. God only had one son. And he gave him to die. Mm -hmm. For you and for me. 
one of the deepest verses in the Bible as far as I'm concerned is found in Isaiah chapter 53. The Bible says, yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. For he, God, hath made him, Jesus, to be sin for us. I'll ask you a question. In light of all that God does for you, do you think He's asking too much of us to put Him first? You know how. Honestly, believe and I'm sincere. I believe this. If Jesus were here tonight, I believe he would look at me and ask me the question, Craig, do you really love me? I believe his question to every one of us here tonight would be, love us thou me do you really love me with all your heart do you really love me more than our these do I come first and if we were to say Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He would say, prove it. Show me. you to stand with me if you will. All my heads are bowed and eyes closed. You know, I, I called my wife this morning. <laughs> and we had a good conversation. And I, I don't do this every time we talk, but I don't know, today I just kind of opened my heart to her while we talked on the phone. I just told her how much I loved her. And how much I appreciated her standing behind me for 54 years. And so thankful that God allowed me to spend my life with her. How long has it been since you opened your heart to Jesus and told him what he means to you? Sometimes I tell my wife or my children or grandchildren, I love you just to hear them say, I love you too. That fulfills me. What do you think it does to the heart of God when we take the time to tell him what he means to us? We're going to sing this song and, and, and Brother Mike, could you lead us in Oh How I Love Jesus? And tonight, you just, you just do what God wants you to do. And if you feel a compelling in your heart, just bow in your presence and open up your heart and thank you for all that he's done for you. And
just pour out your heart to him. Let him know how much you love him. And appreciate him. You just, you just obey God tonight. Oh uh -huh. 